Hey guys, this is Gloria Ward and welcome to another I'm Loving Me webinar series. And of course, this is still uh, the month of April where we are talking about uh, autism. It's Autism Awareness Month. And we have a special webinar tonight that I want everybody to pay attention to um, because we have Pam, who is a first-time mom, correct? Yes, ma'am who is uh, also, uh, who also has autism and so does her son. And she is also married and she is going to really, really fill us in with some good insight and information just about some of the things that, you know, she goes through uh, being a first time mom, uh, having, um, having and dealing with autism, dealing with marriage, right? And so Pam, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for coming on, I appreciate it. And Pam, how old are you actually? I'm 27 years old. 27 years old, okay. So, so tell me the journey, uh, Pam. So you have autism, right? And so tell me what that's like. Fill me in on your particular case. Well, I have Asperger's. It's like high functioning autism. And I wasn't diagnosed until like middle school. I was like 13 or 14. Okay. And uh, what were some of the things that were going on where they said that you had the Asperger's? I didn't find out I had actual Asperger's until adulthood, but okay. when I first got diagnosed, they just said I was on the spectrum somewhere. Okay. And so um, once you got diagnosed, what, what was life like for you though? Like what were some of the things that you were going through? Kind of like difficulty in school, sensory issues, Difficulty in a regular school setting, difficulties with sensory issues. It was a lot. Yeah. And and how was it your your parents? Is it the support of the your parents that you had who helped you with that? No, or? it was support of um, um auntie and counseling. Your aunt and counseling. Oh. Yeah, okay. counseling. Okay. And so how has, how has the journey been so far for you? So once you after, found out. After adulthood, it was kind of like, so, so because then I got involved with self-advocacy and stuff. And then they taught me how to advocate yeah. for things that I may need or we may need. Yeah. And what John and the baby. Yeah. And so what are the things that you advocate? Like, what are some of the things that you guys do? I know, of course, I see your shirt. Is your shirt uh, a part of the thing that you advocate? What does it say? Yeah, it says, um, think, think before you judge. judge. I know that's yeah. right. I know that's I right. Big stain. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about that. What What organization is that? I mean... We're part of the Lacan and Latich, and that's in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm on the governor's board, the governor's advisory council on disability affairs. And I'm trying to think what else I'm part of because I'm just involved in a lot of stuff. Okay. okay. And so, what? Okay, so now. You got married. Tell me what was that like? So you guys met in the organization or you guys No, know we met in high school, high school sweethearts. What? For real? Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. So y'all been together for a while. Yeah, we met in like oh eight, oh nine ish. Oh wow, that's a long but time. But I have been seeing him around school, so Mm-hmm. And then you guys got together and you got married. Yeah. And now you have this wonderful baby. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And how old is the baby? He is two years old. 
Oh, so he just got here two years ago. Yes, ma'am. We share the same birthday. Get out. That is so awesome. Wow. So tell me, what is it like being a first-time mom? It's okay. He has me on the move all the time. He's just very, very active. Very, yeah. very smart. Uh-huh. And you said he has autism as well, correct? Yeah, we just found out in like February. Okay. And so seeing, did you see like the same symptoms or did you just... The same sounds like his therapist kept saying, oh, he, he's got sensory issues or whatever. And then like the doctor tested him and they said he showed red flags. And then whenever um, they did the test um, for his therapy, they said that he was showing signs. Okay. And is your husband, is he autistic too or no? Um, not that I know of. Okay. And so now that you guys are together, how are you guys raising the kid? Is it, you know, how is it, is it difficult? Is it easy? Like what are some it of the things that you guys challenging, face? very, very challenging. But at the same time, it's very, very rewarding at the same time. So it's both. Okay. So what makes it challenging? Challenging is because he can't speak okay. to say how he feels and what he wants and what he needs. So we basically playing the guessing game. Oh, okay. And you know, uh, when we was uh, having a webinar yesterday and you was on and the lady said that her son, you know, couldn't speak or whatever. Uh, what is it that you, what is it some of the things that you guys do? Like, how do you know when he's hungry and things like that? Is it based on how he cry or? Um, we just got to guess. So if he eats, if like, like sometimes he wants a snack, he'll say cake or cookies or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like if I come out eating a snack, he'll start. But like we, like, we get him um, snacks and stuff, but if he's hungry, sometimes he'll point into the kitchen nah. or point to the cabinet or something. Okay. Or if he wants his bottle or his cup, he'll get his cup mm -hmm. and bring it to me. Okay. And that's when you know, like, he's hungry and things like that. Or thirsty. Or thirsty. Okay. So how about, like, if he wants to play? Does he play? Does he... Is he... He likes to play. All? He screams to go outside, but he <laughs> runs to the door and that's letting me know he wants to go outside. Okay. Okay. So how has momhood been challenging for you now? Um, it's sort of, um, it's good, but it's... You can tell the truth. <laughs> I don't know how to like explain it. It's like fun, but it's just different. Yeah, because you have a human being that you're actually taking care of now, you know. Yeah, a human being, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, hold on. Mm-hmm. Okay, you said it. Interruption. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. You said a human being, but at the same time. Yeah, at the same time, um, you got to learn what he needs and what he wants. And, and like, you got to learn his words and stuff. Like, he like, he's like, he like, um, like, and when he says a new word or something, yeah, celebrate. Like, you got to, like, celebrate the small victories. Yes, yes. So that's well, that, kind of fun. Yeah, well, that's a good thing, actually, because it, it, I guess it shows him that he's doing something right. So how does that help you, though? And then, like, and like when he does something good, you got to praise him and he gets all happy. Yeah. So how does that help you, though? Does that allow you to 
how do you deal with your uh autism and his like do you 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 said that you go to therapy do that is he in therapy? i don't go to therapy he does like little therapies at home i don't do therapy okay i used to have a counselor but we stopped seeing each other okay and you didn't need it anymore yeah, I need it, but like it's a complicated situation. Gotcha. That okay. happened. I got you. So he's in therapy. So sooner or later, he'll be talking and moving around, right? Yeah, he runs. Yeah. Okay. And so, how does that, how is it being a mom now? How has that changed you? Uh, I had to mature a lot. I had to <laughs> start to basically focus on his needs and start advocating for what he wants and what he needs and focus on his education and his Correct. therapies and getting him straight and stuff. Wow. And what are some of the things that you guys do with him? Does he go with you to your organization? Uh most times, but sometimes he throws a fit a lot, so okay. it's kind of hard. Okay, and the fits are because he wants something or needs something? Is it that he wants something or needs something, or it's too crowded, or it's too noisy, it's too loud, and I, like, kind of, like, feel the same way like him, but then, like, sometimes, like, we have to leave out and take a break. Right. So when it when it's get too crowded, you you feel like you don't you can't stay in that space or something. Yeah. Okay. Mm hmm. Well, I mean that's usually you know what they say happens. But how do you deal when you're with your organization though? Do you guys like do walks and and uh, runs and things? Not really. It's just like we go to the state capitol all at once or. Sometimes we um we meet our legislators, but that's been a while because we haven't been since last year. Cause our last um thing we were supposed to do, we had to cancel because I believe I either had school that day or something came up. Cause I'm also in college, oh, so I had to kind of slow down on that. And then the baby's in school. Mm hmm. So you got you got real mommy issues. So you got to yeah. take the, you got to take the baby to school and then you got to go to school and then you got to come home and then you got to be yeah. a mom and then you got to be a wife. Now that sounds like real life to me. Yeah. <laughs> How are you handling it all, though? Do you have People a support? People are looking at me like, oh, <laughs> you make this look so easy. Yeah. Like, yeah, heck yeah, it's easy. No, it's not. <laughs> because I don't complain about it too, too much. Good for you. And, but do you have a support system, a mom, family members, anybody? Uh, lots and lots of Good family. You. Like, I have aunts, cousins, friends. Well, not basically friends, but like, just like, I don't know how to even explain it. Some are like some local people, the local politicians, I'm friends with them. Oh, wow. And they come and they help and they. They don't really come and help. Like if I like need help, I go to them. So. Really? Yeah. And, and they sit and they talk with you and they give yeah. you advice and everything. Yeah. My, like the favorite out of all three of those politicians. I mean, like, not politicians, but it's basically the sheriff and his wife and the chief of police and some of the city council, mm -hmm. um, some of the city council, mm -hmm. and because I'm very, very interested in politics. You you are. So, you're like, oh, she is just all into it. Okay, so is that something that you want to pursue? Yeah, maybe about 10 years from now. <laughs> okay. I got this book, signed an autograph from our former governor. Really? Edwards, he was the governor in 1980-something. Mm. And he signed it and autographed it personally wow. for me. 
Oh, wow. That is amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. So you want to get into politics or be a lawyer or a governor? Probably in the politics, but today I was scheduling classes for my second semester in the summer. And like mm -hmm. at first, like they had a class I couldn't get into. Uh -huh. So I tried to, to get into it again today. And I got in and I was like so freaking excited because it was um it was something with the government. I forgot Good what the you. name of the class was. And I was like excited. Good for you. Because it had something to do with political yeah. science. Okay. So you're into and all like, of that. Uh, I'll call it you with an offer either um more courses like I would have took up criminal justice or political science. Okay. I would have, uh, yeah, I would have tried to major in those two. Okay. But right now I'm majoring in business. Okay. So you got to do one and then eventually you'll get into the whole yeah. side of that and see how it works. Yeah. Hopefully when I get a car, because I got a driver's license. But oh, it's you like do? An intermediate driver's license. And what does that mean? That you drive... Uh, it means time. I have to drive assisted with someone over 21 with the driver's license, but I decided not to take my driver's course, my driver's, um, my driver's test for the, to, in order to get my full license. Mm -hmm. That was just a big step because I wasn't ready to like take the, the will test, but I did pass all my other, um, all my other um stuff for my immediate license. Damn. Let me tell you something. I have to say that you are amazing. You are doing a lot of stuff. You're advocating. You are in college. You are married. You have a child, a two-year-old, and you have, <laughs> you said you have a lot of support, but you know how the you know I'm I'm trying to get out of you. How do you do all of this and still keep everything together? Like, how do you do it? Where does it? Where does that? Where does that come from? Do you? Uh, God, I guess. Uh, yes. Strength. Yes. I think God just gets me the strength. Yes, mm -hmm. I believe that. I believe that. And you go to a church a lot? I'm Catholic. Oh, okay. But I grew up in like Pentecostal and Apostolic churches. Okay. And non denominal churches. Mm hmm. Okay. Wow. Wow. I, I, I'm, I'm truly impressed. So it's like, you know, how do you, how do you hold down the marriage? Do you and your husband get time where y'all have date nights and stuff like that? Uh, when things slow down with JD, yeah, sometimes from time to time, but it's kind of hard with the baby in school right now. So whenever we like have like our anniversary and stuff, like we couldn't really like do too much because it was like I was stuck doing a project. So mm -hmm. like we had to catch the weekend and do a barbecue. Okay. Oh, sure. You and did something. For Valentine's though. Day, we went, we had to bring the kid because I was like, well, it's Valentine's Day. He's, he can come, but he had a fit in the restaurant. Okay. And so tell me about that. When he has fits, what does that do to you? How do you feel about them? I kind of get overwhelmed and just need to kind of step away. Yeah, because little. since you... Until he can compose himself and then... But it's like it's you understand like, it though, right? But you just like, but it overwhelms you at the same time? Yeah. Okay. And so you step away and does your husband just take the baby or something? Yeah, he does. Okay. So when y'all go to restaurants and things like that, if it's too crowded or too noisy or something like yeah, that? Yeah, we, we won't stay for long because then I start to experience the the over like too much of it and then and so does the baby yeah so then we like end up having to leave okay 
And what is that feeling like? If you if you can explain it, is it that is it just too crowded for you? Do you feel like you're claustrophobic, where everything is just claustrophobic? Gets- um, too much is is too intense. Okay. Too much smells and like it just it does something to me. And I start to fog up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you just have to keep it like if you go to a restaurant, it can't be a lot of people. Yeah, and then sometimes I have to listen to my music. Okay. To kind of soothe me before I go in, but I've been working on it and I was like I wanted to go to a Saints game, and mm-hmm. like I went, I didn't have to use my headphones. I like did pretty good. Mm-hmm. Besides, we had we with the baseball coach and baseball team. That's my number one favorite thing aside from campaigning. Really? Yeah, because I like to campaign for local politics, especially my sheriff. My sheriff is number one. Oh my! But um, um, and then next is I was I was um. Slow pitch boys baseball team. Mm-hmm. I like to do that. I like to campaign and fundraise and stuff. But we went to a Saints game and one of me and one of the kids got lost. And I kind of composed myself pretty well and didn't like freak out. Good so we was able to get a hold of the coach and then we was found. And when I got inside the Saints game, I kind of dealt with it pretty good. Okay. Besides, a stranger kept asking if I wanted some of his popcorn. <laughs> Well, we saying the saints, you know, somehow. <laughs> look, I say you keep saying the saints, you know, I'm in Atlanta, so I'm a fan. Yeah, 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 I know. So, you, in Atlanta. you know, we I, there a few years ago. That is that 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 is not music to my ears, you know. We, we went to Atlanta a year before mm-hmm. last. Okay. And we went to Six Flags. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you guys had a good time? Yeah. We enjoyed it. Mm Mm-hmm. And so, again, you being a mom and everything, and you holding it down, and you doing politics, and you in college, and you doing all this amazing stuff, what are some of the things that you want to do when you look at your life moving forward with your son? Because... I'm thinking because you have uh, figure out how to do so much, of course, you're going to naturally teach him how to get his composure and do so many good things, which is fantastic. But down the road, do you, do you really see yourself into politics? Because politics, you know, they have really big crowds and they, and they, uh, yeah, that's a lot of people. Like, but you see, I was running with my mentor, my cousin, he was mm-hmm. a city councilman and he would, we would run with him and then we ended up running with the mayor pro tem and they would just bring us all over the place. Yeah. Uh-huh. So we was constantly in the crowds with the people. Uh-huh. And how, how did that affect you? Was that okay? Because you love it? Sometimes I didn't, sometimes I didn't, but then when it would get too much for me, I would kind of like walk away and like take a, a minute or so and then go back but it was sometimes it was just excitement and fun and enjoyment because yes. we would go to the city council meetings and I had to slow down because we couldn't too much bring the baby but I plan on starting that back up because I got to get kind of familiar with our new city council woman she's amazing Oh, wow. Yeah, she ran, she had her run off against guys, and she actually won, and she's, like, amazing. Mm-hmm. Once I got to, like, speak with her and stuff, she was, yeah. Well, I think you're amazing. I think you're so super- like, it's amazing that we have two female city council women in office. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what's next for you now? Like, um... So your son, you said that he's getting therapy now and he's in school and everything. Um, how's married life? Married life is challenging, but yet rewarding again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. How long you guys been married? Five years. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've been married, married for a long time. Uh-huh. Okay. 
a lady come up to me yesterday, happy first anniversary. I say, no, ma'am. No, ma <laughs> in five years. Yeah, I know that's right. <laughs> oh, boy. And is he very helpful with the baby and everything? Oh, yes, he's very helpful. Good. Good. I'm glad. So I would love to talk to you more, actually, but... It's like, um, tell, tell us about your organization and like whatever it is that you're involved in and maybe how we can Im get involved. Think before you judge. What is the name of that organization? That's nothing. That's just a, a shirt that a girl from the Trike Mamas, when we had, went to Washington, D.C., she had made that shirt for me. Oh, she did? We had, it's a personal shirt. Yeah. Okay. We had to go to Washington, D.C. for the Medicaid bill. They was trying to kill our Medicaid, like, mm. two years ago when the baby was little. Mm -hmm. And, like, we went up there, and we advocated, mm -hmm. and they killed the bill. That's oh. when they had all the stuff at Capitol Hill, and they was dragging all the people out in wheelchairs and stuff. Wow. And we made our way down there and protested and rallied and everything. Mm hmm. And it didn't work out, but you guys were able to make some kind of statement, correct? Yes, ma'am. Well, that's good. That's good. So what's next for you is graduating college. What year are you in right now? I'm in my first year, first semester. Okay. And it's going well for you? Um, it's kind of hard, but I guess it just depends on the teachers. But for my summer um, semester, I'm going to do one class at the school and the rest online. Mm -hmm. So that you're able to still take care of the baby and do everything? Yeah. Okay. Well, Pam, I enjoyed talking to you. I think, I think you're doing an amazing job. And you're handling a lot of stuff. Like, you're handling a lot of stuff. And that is... That is super amazing. And you know, it's it's for a first time mom, like when you was on the webinar yesterday, being a first time mom and knowing that it's very difficult to handle things and to know that you're not only doing that, but you're going to school and you're advocating and you're doing all these wonderful things. When do you have time for yourself? Well, I don't really like, in my spare time, I just prefer to like just focus on our sheriff campaign and our softball fundraising and contacting the coach and stuff to keep things going and making sure JD's therapist and stuff is going right and stuff. In my spare time, I just like to just continue. Okay, you don't Keeping like time things time. rolling. I don't like to just like just stop because then I stop and then like my ADHD will take over and <laughs> things get backed up and it's like crazy. Okay. I got you. There well, is the snowball effect that would happen. I got you. So you try to keep yourself busy and try to keep yourself organized and make sure you keep getting things done. Yeah. I hear you. So I definitely still want to follow up with you just to check on you and make sure everything is okay with you. You know, because I I strongly believe you are doing an awesome job. And is there, if there's anything that we can do, you know, to like help you along your journey and support you, please don't, you know, be afraid to reach out because you are doing And then I'm also decided to do pageants. You and got into pageants? First pageant was last January. Really? I mean, this January and I came out third runner up. Get out! And I got the prettiest hair. And get uh, out! And I got a free hunting trip. I mean, well, hunting fishing trip. Mm hmm And the autograph book. Mm hmm When you came in third place, how did that make you feel? I, I actually cried because I couldn't understand like what third runner-up was until like somebody explained to me. Okay, so you like, were crying kinda, because you thought was, you lost? I was kind of sad because I didn't, like, fully understand if it was good or bad. Okay, gotcha. 
And then we went last and I was already like frustrated because the dress kind of, the dress made me feel kind of funny, like sensory wise, it was, it was overwhelming and excited. It was just, I was experiencing too many emotions at once. Gotcha. Okay. But you kept it together, right? Yeah. I kept it composed and took pictures and then. And as soon as I got in the back, I just let it all. I just let it all. Let it all out, and you start crying. <laughs> and then I hurry up and uh-huh. I dry it up, clear it up. I I, I and know. I would get out the dress. So <laughs> on my walk out, in case uh-huh. I had to talk to anybody, I was like, just it had to be quick. It had to be quick. <laughs> I know what I want to know. When you say you get yourself composed what what is that do you is that something that you learned when you were in therapy or is that something that you learned on your own that kind of I had to learn to cope on my own because I do have a set of sensory I do have a set of stems but I I try not like I try to mask it and try like because girls with Asperger's tend to mask the autism but what does that mean that they don't want nobody to know they try like no like it's all like I'm okay with identifying with the autism, but it's just I prefer not to like have people staring at me and stuff. Okay. Looking at me like, why are you doing that? And I don't want to have to like be explaining why I'm doing it, why I'm doing it. So I try to like figure out a couple of neurotypical stems. Like some people like they click their pins and all that. So. I recently, like, tried to do it, like, snapping. That kind of, like, soothed me a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I do have a lot of stems, and I've been sensory seeking a lot, mm. lately a lot. Okay. And so the sensory seeking helps you calm down? No. Yeah, like, as soon as I find something to soothe me, it's, it's okay. But then I have to, like, be careful because... Too much of a good thing can hurt you. Okay. And what does that mean? Say like you, I wanted to listen to music mm-hmm. and sit down, like just sit down and listen to music. Mm-hmm. I can't do that all day because then I can end up getting behind on schedule or gotcha. not being able to hear what's going on in my surroundings. So I can't really have the music. I have to have the music only when I'm walking. Gotcha. Well, girl, that's anybody. If you sit and listen to music all day, anything is going to get behind. Yeah, so that's why you have to limit yourself and give yourself a sensory diet. Yeah, I get that. Well, that's a lesson for me. When I'm sitting doing something too much, I need to give myself a sensory and stop doing it and do something else. No, you give yourself a sensory diet for soothing and relaxation. Okay. So like when my set of stems, yes, I do my stems at home alone. In my bedroom where nobody can see it. Or if I'm in a public, I find a nearest spot where no one sees and I do it. Okay. And that's because you don't want nobody to see? Well, you say you don't want nobody staring. I don't want anyone staring. But if I get kind of like, like, too upset, it can just happen out of the blue. Okay. And when I catch myself, I got to just immediately stop. Okay. Well, at least you are aware you know, and you know what to do to get yourself, you know, back centered and back in alignment. That's, that's, that's a yeah. very good thing. You it know. took years and years and years to like figure that out. Of course. But that's something that you can transfer to because yourself. Because I try to mimic the other girls. I try to mimic girls my age and like, I try to mimic like grown ups and stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm. And how does that work out for you? Sometimes it can be good. Sometimes it can be bad. Sometimes I copy <laughs> the phrases. <laughs> Some of the phrases uh-huh. the neurotypical say around. It's like, because I can't keep up with this stuff. So I like start mimicking the phrases after I go and research a, phrase, a new phrase I heard. Mm-hmm. I, will, I will go research and look it up. And then I start saying like, okay, it's safe to say. Like what it even means. Right. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Well, 
I would say keep doing what you're doing because obviously it's working and that's something that you could transfer to your son. You know what I'm saying? So now yeah. that you know that he's ha having tantrums right now, but you'll be able to go ahead and, you know, just do little things to help him get to where he needs to be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because right now we're at a hit and miss or trial and error stage. Okay. We don't know what works and we don't know what works, what doesn't right. work. Right. But we don't know what it. triggers him up. We're just trying to figure it out. Because okay. right now I actually identified several of my triggers. Now I have to work on what triggers him. Mm. What's his triggers? Okay. What are some of the things that trigger you? A loud noises, certain smells. Too many people crowding in one area that smells different. <laughs> certain certain voices. Okay. The tone, the tone and loudness of certain voices. Okay. Okay. I'm not triggering you, huh? Is no, my voice okay? <laughs> no, no. It's mostly some of those loud men voices or some gotcha. of these, some of these nasally girl voices or something like that. Nasally. Which is weird. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so anything that you need, let us know. I, I hope that you participate in our project because it's called the I'm Loving Me Project. And, you know, basically I'm here to inspire one million women to love themselves. And it will be great to have a politician on our side to help us do some amazing things that we want to do. So we can't wait for you to uh, get finished and to... Uh, get to where you need to be for sure you know yes, and being a mom is such a wonderful thing and I'm I'm just yes, so glad it is. It's a beautiful thing. yeah and I'm happy that you're taking that journey and you're learning because you know I said I always say you know God doesn't give you anything that you can't handle and you have done so much work to get yourself to where you are right now your son is going to be okay you know what I mean? Like your son yeah, is going to be yeah. awesome. Your son is going to be awesome because you're awesome and you got an awesome family and husband and support system. So, and you're focused. So that's the most important thing, you know? So you know where you want to go. So that's good. I would just say when you get in those moods where you want to talk to somebody, you just make sure that you reach out and you can reach out to us if you want to just to do girl talk or to talk about what's on your mind or anything like that, because that comes up a lot, especially if you're a mom and especially if you're in college, because it's like you said, it's so many emotions going on. That's normal. You know, yeah. that's normal. So yeah, take advantage. Anything that you need, let us know. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate you talking to us. Anything else you want to say before we go? I don't know. Okay. Well, I appreciate you. I love you. I thank you for doing thank you. this. I know you're going to help out so many women and you're and you're doing you're doing the right thing. You are bringing awareness to uh autism and you're also bringing awareness for being a mom who has autism and who has a child who has autism. But just the whole aura that you have, you'll be fine. So I'm definitely going to keep up with you, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, you go get some sleep, because I am. Okay? Yes, Good All night. Right. All right, good night. <laughs>